Hello everyone, welcome to your 27th C++ Cube game tutorial. So let's just go ahead and make a, a change from the last tutorial. I want to move this uh, hex board to uh, like around here and I want to make it 7x7. Seven seven. So we'll just go inside the game class, we'll go inside the start, and here when we call the play hexes member function, we're going to move it to about 240 on the x-axis and uh, about 30 on the y-axis. And then we're going to make seven rows and seven columns. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's a little bit better. Uh, now, 240 is a little too far, so I want to move it back a little bit, maybe by uh, 30 pixels or, or 40 pixels. So I'll just change that to 200, and let's see that. Okay, that's better. So now I have a bigger board to play it. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to allow the player to click uh, these cards and then to be able to move them onto the board. So that's the goal of this tutorial. Now as usual, I always make a planning sheet. for. Uh, so for example, the purpose of this uh, task is to allow placing of cards. So I make this sheet on how I'm going to achieve that. So my goal is to allow the player to place a card on the board. Now a card and a hex are the same thing. A card is just a hex that has not been placed yet. So therefore, we need to keep track of whether a hex has been placed or it has not been placed. If it has been placed, then it is a hex. But if it has not been placed, then it's what we call a card. It's just a naming convention that I'm using. So we need to keep track of that. And then we also need getters and setters to know whether a card is placed or it's not placed. Moving on. We also need to know which player owns the hex. So the, uh, a hex is either going to be occupied by player 1, by player 2, or it's going to be no one. So these are the three strings that we'll use. So we'll need getters, uh, we'll need attribute, um, an attribute describing who owns the hex, and getters and setters for that also. So one note about this is that the set owner, the setter for the owner, should change the hex's color accordingly. So each player has a different color. We're going to go ahead and use a, a um, set color to make that happen. OK, so the game class will need to know which card we are trying to place. So it, it, when we click on a card, um, let me see if it's running. I'll run this and I'll show you guys in here. So when we click on a card, then the game class needs to remember that this is the card that we click on. So we need an attribute for that also. Um, and then on when we move the mouse, the game class will have to make that clicked card follow the mouse. So it's kind of a drag and drop thing. And then when we press it again, or when we right click the mouse, then it should cancel the placing of the card. So it should move it back to its previous position. Therefore, we need to keep track of the original position, uh, not the previous position. We need to keep track of the original position of the card that we're trying to place. So now going back to our game, if I click this card, for example, the second one, now I want to check, OK, is it player one's turn, first of all, because you should only be able to click this card if it's player one's turn. Now the second thing I want to keep track of is the original position of this. So that in case I, I cancel it, and I'm making the cancel happen by right-clicking, it should move back to its original position. So we have to keep track of its original position. Um, and, we, and we have to keep track of its owner, and we have to check it whose turn it is to make sure that the uh, player whose turn it is is clicking on his own cards. Okay. So we'll make a game public attribute. Um, called original position, and this keeps track of the original position of the current card that you're trying to place. <clears throat> um, the hex class will also need to be able to uh, respond to being clicked on. So if it's clicked, we want to check. Uh, again, I'll demonstrate while uh, looking at this visual. So if we click here, it should pick it up. It's a card, so it's not placed yet. And then when we click on a hex here, it should first check. Is this hex neutral? If so, then delete it and add this placed card onto it. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. Um, 
so we need two member functions. We need pick card up that takes a pointer to a card and it will pick that card up. So if I click here, it should pick this card up. Okay. And then we'll need a place card also. A place card member function that will replace the card. And uh, so if I pick this up and then I click this, then I should replace that card to the card that I'm trying to place. Um, okay, so that's the planning. Now let's go ahead and start implementing it from the very beginning. So again, a card needs to know whether it's placed or a hex, I'm sorry, a hex needs to know whether it's placed or it's not placed and we need getters and setters for that. So we'll go ahead and check that right now. So hex, we need a private attribute that says, um, so basically bool is placed. So this will describe whether it's placed or not. And then we need getters and setters. So we'll do, um, this will return a bool is placed. And set is placed. Um, this one is bool get, call it get is placed. So we have a get is placed, set is placed, and an is placed member function. Okay, that's checked. Um, now, what what should we do by default when we initialize or when we create hexes? Um, so when we go back inside the game class, and then when we go inside the start, and then when we go inside this place hexes member function, um, here we should originally um, make all of the hexes uh, belong to no one. So the owner should be no one. So that takes us to the concept of ownership. The hexes need to know who is owning them. So uh, here we have an owner that's a Q string and uh, we have a set owner. We also need a get owner. So uh, let's just go ahead and do get owner. So this will return Q string. Get owner doesn't take anything and it will simply return the owner. Okay. So we have that. And then we already created the set owner, I believe. Yes. And we, uh, we simply set the owner. But in addition to that, we have to change the color. So when we set the owner of a text, then we have to change its color to the respective owner. In this example, for player one, I'm going to use blue. For player two, I'm going to use uh, uh, red. And for no one or neutral hex, I'm going to use gray. So let's just go ahead and do that. Now, how do we uh, change the color? So we'll do set the owner and change the color. So we want to check. We want to change the color based on uh, who we are trying to set it to. So if player is equal to Q string we'll handle no one. So if we're trying to change it to no one, if we're setting it to no one, then we want to change the color to um, neutral. So we will do uh, Q brush. Brush, we'll create a brush. Brush that set um, style QT solid. Solid pattern. And then brush that set color to um, light gray, I guess. Or maybe regular gray, I'll check that later. And then we want to set the brush of this hex, this brush that we just created. Now, this will set uh, no one. We need to do similar things for uh, player one and player two. So if we're trying to change the owner to player one, then we want to make it blue okay and if we're trying to change it to player two then we want to make it red there we go okay now let's go back and follow our logic in the game class when we click start um, we place hexes originally I want all of the hexes to belong to no one so here after I create a hex in the create hex column 
I'm gonna um, set owner to no one initially. Okay, so we'll simply do hex, the hex that we're creating, set owner, and uh, we will pass in a Q string, no one. Okay, there we go. So let's go ahead and test this out so far. We have some bugs. So brush, okay, I have not included Q brush. That's an easy fix. All right, let's run it again. And here we are, I click play, and there we go. See, player one's cards is here, and uh, player two's cards are here. And player one's is blue, player two's is red, and all these guys are light gray, which looks good, looks much better now. Okay. So we've done that. We um, well, let's. Did we check is placed? Yes, we uh, added the is placed attributes and getters and setters. And then we also need to know which player owns the card. And we did the set owner uh, member function, which actually changes the color also. So we've taken care of those two tasks. Let's move on to the third one. Now we said that the game class will need to know which card we are trying to place. So we need a pointer to the card that we uh, have clicked. So for example, this will be easier for me to describe if I show you the game. Okay, so if I click this card, then I want to pick that up. So I need to keep a pointer to this card, and I also need to store its original location in case I want to cancel the placing. Um, so if I pick it up, I keep a pointer to it, and then uh, I have to uh, basically know which uh, when I click on a hex and if the hex is neutral, then I want to replace this neutral hex with the player hex. So let's go ahead and go inside the uh, a game class. Now we need to keep track of uh, which card we are trying to place. So we will go ahead and make that a public attribute. So hex, this will be a pointer and we'll call it card to place. And originally it's going to be no. So let's go inside the game constructor and initialize this card to place to no. So we're not initially trying to place any cards. So game constructor, set up game, and initialize variables. Okay. So card to place is equal to no. Oh, that is, I don't want to check it. I want to set it. Okay, so I think that's a good place to stop for now. So we have given uh, the hexes concept of ownership, and we've given them a concept of whether they're placed or not. And we have also uh, made an attribute to keep a pointer to the card that we're trying to place. So thank you for watching, and uh, I hope to see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.